Welcome! Today we're going to talk about this lovely 2022 Tesla Model 3 Long Range that we have for sale. Then we'll take it out for a little spin because this one has some extra goodies as far as software goes. If we go over here to the software screen, we click, we look at this, Acceleration Boost. That's a $2,000 in-app purchase and it takes down the 0-60 to 3.7 seconds. Very quick, that's like sports car territory. You could even say supercar territory for maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing how fast this thing is and it's electric power. So there's no, you know, it's instantaneous thrust uh, Unlike any other gas car. So we'll take it for a spin um, So yeah, basically it gets a uh, software update and it unleashes more power Someone actually did a uh, test. They had a Model Y which is pretty much the same electric motors and battery as a Model 3 um, So I'm sure the same applies uh, He took it to a dyno and he had a dynoed uh, before he did the acceleration boost upgrade then after he did the first dyno, he uh, downloaded the acceleration boost upgrade on his Tesla app, downloaded it, and then boom, they dynoed it again, and it had another 100 horsepower. So the acceleration boost adds about another 100 horsepower, bringing the performance a lot closer to the Model 3 performance. Model 3 performance is still a little bit faster. Zero to 60 is like three seconds versus 3.7. Um, it has more, the Model 3 performance has more top end power, higher top speed, and the newer ones have, uh, you know, a, a sport suspension, a more aggressive wheel and tire package and bigger brakes and things like that so it's not everything that the model 3 performance has but um you know if you're not going to go on track days <laughs> you're not going to cook the brakes you just want some extra acceleration this uh, acceleration boost upgrade is a nice feature and it's a two thousand dollar software upgrade which will go to you when we transfer this over to you we just recently transferred this to our account and we didn't lose this uh boost upgrade i've never had anyone lose a, a software uh, on a Tesla transfer and we've sold hundreds of them. Uh, so we took this one in on trade for a Model Y uh, performance. Obviously they like the Tesla product and they upgraded to the Model Y which is a crossover version of the Model 3 and they upgraded to the performance. Obviously uh, they like the performance and <laughs> now they get a lot more with that Model Y performance. But if you're in a market for a nice pre-owned Model 3, this 2022 is a great one to consider. Uh, uh, 2021 and newer Model 3s, they got a lot of uh, advantages. They got a lot of perks. 2021, uh, this Tesla rolled out a lot of uh, great features. So this 2022 also benefits from it. Only 19,000 miles. Uh, so some of the biggest uh, features we see on these newer Teslas is for one, we can see cabin heater heat pump. Uh, this makes it a lot more efficient in uh, colder weather. Uh, heat pumps, just like your house, are more efficient for heating and cooling. Uh, likewise, when you, they added the heat pump, that really boosted the Model 3's range when fully charged. The range is about 330 miles, uh, but we don't charge to 100% on these Model 3's, and I'll tell you why shortly. Uh, so the heat pump is a, definitely a big uh, difference that first rolled out in 2021. And it might have been 21 or 22, is that we have the AMD uh, Ryzen, Ryzen, uh, Ryzen? <laughs> uh, infotainment processor. So it's a faster processor than on some of the older Teslas. I have a 2019 Model 3, so you know my software screen is not quite as fast and then it benefits other uh ways too for you know watching movies infotainment i can't do this while you're driving while it's while it's parked you can watch this stuff um then uh, video games with a uh, better processor you can uh, play more uh, graphics heavy video games than some of the earlier teslas tesla's always kind of rolling out new features uh, we have the toy box you have the megaphone so you can talk through the horn if you want <laughs> to scare people in a scary voice uh, you can make the horn sound like a fart or goat uh, you have a colorizer so you can change the vehicle's avatar. If you decide to wrap it, you can match your car's avatar to the wrap. All sorts of stuff. And Tesla's just constantly rolling out uh, software upgrades, making it better. And a lot of people, you know, ridicule Tesla for, you know, having a lack of buttons and knobs. But really, this screen makes it so much easier uh, to... Uh, to make changes and uh, keep it relevant. So even though my Model 3 is a 2019 uh, and it's a lot older than this one, my screen and features uh, are very similar to what this looks like. Now, I don't have everything and that's because of over their updates. They're able to update my infotainment system and the software. So it kind of mirrors, uh, you know, what, you know, newer Teslas have like this one. So it helps keep your vehicle relevant. When you have hard buttons and knobs, those are there forever. You can't uh, reconfigure them. You have lots of uh, voice commands. There's 150 different voice commands that you can use. Um, for instance, wipers on. You can put your wipers on. Rear defroster on. Rear defroster off. 
Wipers on. Sorry. Wipers off. So, you know, people say, oh, I hate having to scroll through the screen, but with 150 different voice commands, you don't even need to take your eyes off the road to make a lot of changes to the vehicle settings and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I can go on and on. Okay, so let's see some other features. Some other features that we got uh, starting rolling out in 2021 is now we have a heated steering wheel. Uh, prior to 2021, you did not get a heated steering wheel on the Model 3. Then we have Tesla glass. You can see this has a double laminated glass. Uh, so I have a sound deadening material sandwiched in between. It makes it a lot quieter. That Tesla glass started rolling out, I think, in 2021 as well on a Model 3. We also can see we have a tire pressure fault. Uh, th these vehicles are really good at alerting you if there's system faults. And uh, that's it's really easy. You don't call Tesla. You don't have to be on hold. And I, I can tell you, you know, obviously servicing our own vehicles is not a problem because we're an Infinity dealership. But when I have to service off-brand vehicles, sometimes just calling in and trying to get a hold of a serving, <laughs> service consultant at a dealership service department is a pain. But you do everything through the app. I went to the app. I told them what was wrong. And then I was able to schedule uh, an appointment uh, at a local Tesla store that's close to us. Um, yeah, and, and, I'm, and after I'm done doing this video, I'm actually gonna drop it off and pick up another Tesla I had uh, at the service facility as well, getting some warranty work done. So really easy. Service and drop up is really easy as well. You can message, you can message uh, the service consultants. You can take pictures and stuff. Uh, really quite amazing. Um, and uh, they also have mobile service. So uh, for some services like, you know, ca changing cabin filters, wiper blades, uh, th small things like that. Maybe if you have a damaged tail light or a headlight that has water or condensation, they have mobile service people that can come to your work or your home and perform that service. So really quite amazing stuff. Really nice color combination in graphite gray on uh, black leather. Uh, so this is all wheel drive. You have a motor in the front, motor in the back, making it all wheel drive. It's also like having two engines, making it really fast. <laughs> so I can go zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Since there's no uh, engine up here, you have a front, more storage. There's also a safety feature. You have a cripple zone uh, about 60% uh, larger than a gas car. You have all this space here to absorb crash energy. In fact, when the NHTSA first crash tested the Model 3 as the highest rated vehicle they've ever tested, uh, by pretty much every metric, uh, when the NHTSA first tested the Model 3, it's the safest vehicle they tested, the lowest probability of injury uh, for a major vehicle accident. Quite amazing stuff. Nice, beautiful interior, very clean. I uh, really like the understated lines in the Model 3. It's definitely not in your face. It's kind of very minimalist design, but I think it's really nicely done um, and it's aged quite well. Obviously they have a new Model 3 coming out. I was just actually looking at it at the Tesla uh, store when I was there for service. Um, you know, the new Model 3 is has a lot of benefits. It's really awesome. Uh, but I still like the look of this older Model 3. The, uh, the front end styling, especially in the new Model 3 is kind of plain. They kind of deleted the fog lights and stuff like that. Uh, so, but you know, maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe, you know, you're thinking the same thing. Should I buy a, a pre-owned Tesla or buy a new one or wait to buy, order a new Model 3? Obviously that's a, that's a decision that you're gonna have to make on your own. There's a uh, perks to buying an older pre-owned one like this versus a brand new one. Obviously on the pre-owned market, you know, these aren't anywhere what they cost new. You have this nice carbon fiber spoiler as well. All right, let's uh, talk to you about charging as well, charging to 80%, I forgot to cover that. Um, so charging to 80% uh, for daily use is recommended by Tesla, not on all the Model 3s. Like for instance, the Model 3 standard range has LFP battery, lithium iron phosphate. Um, those actually like to be charged to 100% every day, you know? Those like to be charged to 100%. Um, which uh, allows you to take more, uh, you know, better advantage of your fully charged range. But there are trade-offs. The LFP batteries, they weigh more than lithium-ion batteries, so they add weight to the vehicle. Um, so generally, the Tesla puts them in their lower tier vehicles, like the entry-level vehicles. The performance-oriented vehicles, like the Plaids and the Performances, they have lithium-ion batteries, which this one also has. Lithium-ion batteries are more energy dense. Um, they can release more electricity quicker for better performance. Um, they, but they generally cost more, uh, so there is a trade-off. Um, so this has lithium-ion batteries, but the thing with lithium-ion batteries, they don't like to be charged to 100% every day. It's not good for them. So to get the maximum range out of your Tesla, 
you have the slider right here, you also have it on the app. That's perfectly fine. They charge it to 100, 100%. Uh, for you know occasional road trips and stuff like that. That's perfectly fine But for daily use charge it to 80% for the happy life of your lithium-ion batteries These model threes have proven to be very robust um, You know, we have a 2012 model S the first, you know full deal Tesla um, That only has about like 66,000 miles not a lot of miles on it But you know the batteries are holding up really good the whole vehicle is holding up very well very good for their first uh, first shot at making a ground-up vehicle on their own um, we've had a model three uh, with 125,000 miles still working great. There's uh, Teslas out there with 300,000 miles. You know, there's a Tesla High Mileage Club on Facebook. There's actually one Model S that has over a million miles. That's had several battery packs replaced, but it's still averaging a battery pack about every 300,000 miles, which is pretty good. If you could get 200, 300,000 miles out of this vehicle, you're doing really well. You have the amazing Tesla app too, which you can use to access your vehicle. You can pull up live cameras. Um, you can preheat your vehicle. For instance, you know, in the morning, if you want to heat up your vehicle or cool it off, you can put on the heated seats, you can set the climate control, you can defrost it. Um, all sorts of cool stuff you can do with this app. Um, then for a warranty, you have a lot of warranty in the vehicle as well. Uh, you know, a lot of people worry about how long the batteries are going to last. Well, the batteries in Teslas and a lot of EVs have proven to be very robust, and many lasting many hundreds of thousands of miles, but they can prematurely go bad, just like an engine in your car. But like an engine in your car, it's really designed to last the whole life of the vehicle, not to be replaced. But uh, again, things can go sideways. I mean, it, things can, uh, you know, you can have things go prematurely bad, like an engine. That can happen with batteries, even though it's a little bit more rare. Uh, but worry not, you have a lot of warranty on your batteries and your drive units. Your drive units are your electric motors. Like you can look at in this vehicle, we still have a lot of bumper to bumper warranty uh, up uh, till June 7th, 2026 or 50,000 miles. That's a bumper to bumper. And Tesla's pretty liberal about covering things. They even will cover a dead battery, like a dead low voltage battery where a lot of other car manufacturers, they won't, they'll make you pay for it. Uh, so, you know, I applaud Tesla on that nickel and diming you and being pretty liberal about warranty coverage. Then the battery uh, limited warranty, uh, June 17th, 2030 or 120,000 miles. Right now it's 2024. So you probably, you might not even own this vehicle anymore <laughs> by the time the warranty is up on the battery. So that kind of gives you some peace of mind. So yeah, you know, n nothing to worry about there for quite a while in the batteries and just for most other repairs as well. All right, let's get behind the wheel and take it for a spin and see how this thing accelerates for the acceleration boost upgrade. And then we'll take it to the Tesla service department. I got to drop this one off and pick up another Tesla. All right, we're taking this 2022 Model 3 long range all wheel drive with the acceleration boost upgrade out for a spin. One of my favorite features about the Tesla is the autopilot. It's mainly designed to be used on highways but you can use it on roads like this, unlike other uh, ADAS systems. Uh oh, we got the rainbow road on it. That's a setting <laughs> in the system. You can shut that on or off if it's annoying. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, so it's traffic aware cruise control. It allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane, but there are limitations. For example, it's not gonna stop for stop signs. So I have to hit the brakes here <laughs> to stop it. It will stop for vehicles in front of you. So if you're in stop and go traffic and there's a vehicle stopping in front of you, you can get a lot of mileage out of it. Um, it's not full self-driving, uh, but it really works, especially in stop and go traffic and on the highway, long highway trips, it's a godsend. So I got a little straightaway up here. I'm gonna mass the throttle once I get pointed straight and see how this thing accelerates with the acceleration boost upgrade. All right, looks like most of these people are making right turns and here we go. Woo. Whoa. All right, no problem at all getting up to 60 miles an hour. I'm gonna slow down a little bit since we have some road construction. But uh, the thing with electric vehicles is they make their power instantly. There's no uh, waiting for the engine to rev up. There's no transmission to shift. It just has one gear. So you have instantaneous throttle response. And roll-on acceleration is quite amazing too. For instance, if I had a gas car right now and I went to master throttle, there'd be a momentary hesitation while the engine downshifts. It figures out where to rev. Here, I just hit the throttle <laughs> and boom, instantaneous acceleration. This is not a plaid, it's not a performance, but even the slower Teslas are a lot of fun to drive. They're still faster than many other gas cars. Uh, you know, uh, my 2019 Model 3 standard range is zero to 60 in five seconds, but it's still a lot of fun to drive with that instant power you get from an electric vehicle. And then the autopilot is another uh, great feature. It can follow gentle bends in the highway. It's not gonna take hard, sharp, you know, hairpin turns. But you can see it does a pretty good job following the lines on the highway. We're gonna take a right over here. 
um, but I'm, I'm telling you, autopilot will spoil you, especially if you drive a lot on the highway. You have a stop and go commute to like Seattle and stop and go traffic for an hour and a half. You're gonna wonder how I even live <laughs> without autopilot. It's almost torturous. Yeah, for me to drive a, a, a vehicle on the highway without these ADAS systems for any length of time, it is not a good time. It makes your life so much nicer. All right, we're gonna put the autopilot back on. So there are limitations to autopilot. It's not full self-driving. Sometimes you can get, um, sometimes people put a little bit too much faith <laughs> in the system. So you really need to pay attention, not be distracted, keep your hands in the wheel. You know, keep your hands in the wheel. Uh, don't use any cheating devices. But even in a situation like this, a lot of other ADAS systems might get tripped up, but this actually does a pretty good job following these lines. Like it's not gonna take hard hairpin corners, but stuff like that, that's probably, you know, uh, the limitations as far as we can do as far as cornering, uh, you know, on roads like this. But, you know, it's moving with the flow of traffic. Any traffic stops in front of me, it's going to stop of it. See, so did a pretty good job staying in this lane. Mind you, this is not full self-driving. It's not enhanced autopilot. It's just a regular old autopilot that you pretty much get now of every new Tesla you buy. And it's even with the basic autopilot still a lot better than the most advanced ADA systems you have in other vehicles so yeah you know when you put it on the car is doing the work for you you can kind of feel like a whole weight of shoulder uh, a whole weight lifted off your shoulders um i definitely feel a lot more at ease once i get the vehicle going i can put the autopilot on and i can just ah uh, i'm just in supervisor mode i'm just paying attention the car is doing the work for me you know uh, it doesn't take a ton, but you know, driving, keeping a car, even keeping a car centered on the lane on the highway does require a certain amount of mental energy. <laughs> You'd be surprised. And obviously, uh, see, it's coming to a complete stop with this vehicle in front of me. If, if I was the first one at the red light, I'd have to stop it on my own because it's not going to stop for red lights. But just as long as there's vehicles stopping in front of you, you can see you can get a lot of mileage out of this autopilot. Like in stop and go traffic on Pacific Highway, um, you know, you can run on your autopilot for 15, 20 minutes, half hour, even longer in really heavy duty traffic. Um, and uh, some other ADAS systems, when you come to a complete stop, it, they disengage and then you have to re-engage them to get going again. Not the case of autopilot. You just keep it in autopilot and it'll just keep on going and going and going. Every once in a while, um, it's gonna give you what we call a nag. So uh, hey, say, hey, you know, wiggle the wheel a little bit just to show me that you're paying attention, you're not distracted, you're not gonna get an accident. And it will never be able to overpower you, power you. See, boom, I just shut the autopilot off. You're not gonna be overpowered by this. I'm actually in the, the wrong lane. Is this guy gonna let me in? Yeah. There we go. Sometimes you gotta make your own room. <laughs> well, that pretty much sums up our little drive in this Model 3. Hopefully it was informative. It can be a little bit long-winded, I apologize, but there's just so much to talk about on these Teslas. They're so different than pretty much any other vehicle on the road. They've kind of reinvented the car, kind of like iPhone, or kind of like Apple reinvented the, the phone. Um, and pretty much every phone we see these days is basically just a copy of the iPhone. I don't know if that's always gonna be the case for cars. I mean, people do like Teslas, but there are a lot of people out there that just keeping it real don't like Teslas. They like them a little bit more old school. Uh, <laughs> You know, to each his own, you know, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that probably wouldn't want to go back to a flip phone, you know, an old school Nokia or anything like that because we're so spoiled by our smartphones. Uh, that's the case with these Teslas with the screen, the infotainment system, the uh, ADAS, the, the advanced autopilot systems. Um, it really does spoil you and sometimes it's hard to go back to that. Appreciate you taking the time today to watch this video. Hopefully see you soon and have a wonderful day.